Today we've got a fun driver comparison, a Titleist 975D 5.5 degree driver. We're going to put it up against a T Titleist TSI 3, uh, so about 20 some years of technology and some very low driver lofts in this test here. So we're going to see how these numbers stack up on TrackMan. <laughs> Hey golfers, Drew Mahole from Second Swing Golf here. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter at Second Swing. We're outside today on the driving range and we've got a fun, unique driver test today. I've got a Titleist TSI-3 and Thomas has a Titleist 975D 5.5 degree driver, uh, 20 some years old and that thing has a journey to it as well. But Thomas, I just want to get your opinion first. Looking at these drivers, hitting a few shots here to warm up a little bit. What do you, I mean, this test will be kind of crazy. So what do you think we're going to see here? Yeah, I remember when I was younger, I played a six degree, I think it was a Callaway ERC driver. Uh, didn't have much loft on it. I remember trying to hit it off the deck and pulling off occasionally, but there's, <laughs> there's definitely not much loft on this and it's obviously sizably smaller than the TSI-3. Yeah, That's for sure. I'm noticing. Yeah, and then you can definitely tell too, just putting it down and seeing the lot. I mean, it's, it doesn't seem like I can get it off the ground really, but. It looks like a putter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's a unique story with this driver too. So. Last year, as the pandemic kind of started, um, an avid golfer by the name of Laz Versalis um, bought that from Second Swing, posted a video himself on Twitter hitting this driver, and it became kind of a trend where the next person wanted to try it, he'd send it to that person, that person would send it to the next person, and it's been to at least 10 states now in the United States. Um, the, the trend kind of stalled a little bit last fall, but we're going to try and pick it back up here. But we wanted to also see how it compares to modern technology. So a five and a half degree driver, those aren't very common. I think maybe Bryson's playing one, but um, you don't see even that loft uh, very much these days. So we're going to loft this TSI-3 down to uh, what, what we're going to do here? 7.25. Uh, 7.25. Yeah. So it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be a mirror to mirror test here, but uh, we'll see what the track band numbers tell us here. I'm, I'm very intrigued. Yeah, the, the TSI-3, it's an eight degree head with adjustable houseable using the tightless adjustable system, you can loft it down about three quarters of a degree lower. Okay. So it's 7.25 with the loft. So it's not quite there, but it's going to be a great comparison comparing the two of them. And we'll see the importance maybe of loft, but also we'll see how different technologies changed as mm -hmm. well. I actually, this morning before coming out here, I weighed both drivers mm -hmm. using the swing weight machine. I was curious to see what the swing weight is. I measured both of them. Length is 45 inches for both. So they both have their standard golf shafts in them. So this is one of the stock golf shafts, the Titleist Custom Ultralight Stiff Shaft. Mm -hmm. And then I've got the Hazardous RDX Smoke Black in this particular one here at 45 inches as well. The swing weight with the uh, 975D came in at D6. Okay. So it's a little bit heavier than I'm kind of used to with swing weight. Yeah. And then D2 right on the number with the TSI-3. So it's kind of more standard what you would typically see. So a little bit more head weight with this Five and a half degree driver, technology has definitely changed with regards to weight. Yep. Be interesting to see how it performs with hitting golf shots. Yeah, I'm very intrigued. I'm also curious to see how things perform on miss hits, uh, the differences. So, um, but Thomas, you ready to hit some bombs here with a couple of uh, very different and unique drivers? Let's compare them. I don't feel like I caught that perfect, but it was pretty good. Yeah. A little high on the face, maybe. There's the miss hit. Oh yeah? All right. So it's, it's interesting with less loft, it exaggerates miss a little mm -hmm. bit more. So that one, if I had more loft on my drive, I don't think it would have gone as far offline. Yeah. Just kind of keep going over to the right. Absolutely, yeah. That's, that, you know, that's what you guys talk about in fittings all the time. You know, the club with less loft, so even like, you know, a four iron, five iron versus eight iron, nine iron, if you have a hook or a slice, it's gonna be exaggerated. And that's part of kind of, uh, you know, something to think about with iron lofts being stronger now. And of course, we're talking about drivers. If you want to go with a stronger loft driver, that's also a consequence of that. Yeah, and it comes down to the distance versus the mm -hmm. dispersion yeah. debate, essentially. Oh, yeah. so. That one smoked. Oh yeah. Those are some good numbers. Oh, that's another bomb. I think that's farther than 314. I don't know. I can't feel it on the face. It is. 
317.4. It feels dead off the face, honestly. It just feels like a thud. Got no feedback from what it feels like coming off the club face. I don't know if I hit it off the toe, I don't know if I hit it off the heel, <laughs> I don't know if I hit it off the middle. Once again, I don't know where I hit that on the club face. <laughs> Went straight. Well, so Thomas, you've hit five shots now with the 975D, and the, the thing you've said over and over now is you don't really have any type of feedback or feel for it, because you, it's the same feeling no matter where you hit it. Yep. Yeah, it, uh, it felt heavy. It felt, I don't know where I hit it on the face, and yeah. I just, I, I hit it pretty straight four of the five times I felt like, but um, it didn't feel great. I mm -hmm. feel like it was going far. I feel like it was kind of knuckle bowling out there, but that's what you expect out of a five and a half degree driver, right? Right, right. That, I mean, it does have that knuckleball effect kind of to it where I don't think you're hitting it as high, um, but or as high as maybe you will with the TSI-3, but it, the, the spin was down, so it's, it's interesting because I know what your numbers are. Um, you know, in the club speed, 110.7, that's going to be kind of similar to what you'll get with TSI-3, I assume, something like that, but ball speed is 162.8. Smash factor then 147, spin rate 2060. So, okay. um, and then carry was 288.5, total 310.3. Uh, so, all those numbers, I mean, those are good numbers comparatively to you know a modern driver. And I think the one thing that we noticed is so on this map, you have four that are really solid and you know within 10 yards of the center line, and then you had that one kind of fade in there that. Um, it didn't, I mean, you maybe didn't feel like it was a drastic slice or fade or anything, but it went nearly 40 yards offline. Um, and then you were talking about the exaggeration of, you know, a stronger loft and, ex you yeah. know, how that can maybe, uh, you know, ex extenuate the curve a little bit. So it looked like that's what happened there. Yeah, I, uh, it's, and it's small <laughs> and looking down at it, like mm -hmm. putting the, the tee in the ground, I had to remind myself to tee it a little lower because I've, I've liked to tee it pretty high of recent because my, my with my attack angle yeah, pretty yeah. far up. I literally put the tee on the ground um, and I put the ball on there and I felt like I could slide the club underneath the ball. Yeah, I mean, that's how it felt. It like, is. It's, a it's completely, literally right underneath. It's, it's kind of amazing to see how that's how much, I mean, you can just see visually how much drivers have changed over the years where that, how small and compact that club head is and now we have the TSI 3, which isn't necessarily the you know, longest footprint out there for mm -hmm. drivers, but it's certainly much bigger and you're gonna, I'm sure you'll see the difference uh, when you hit that one. Yeah, I could use a little larger profile here and <laughs> it'd be nice to maybe feel it off the club face because that's one yeah. thing I just I just noticed with this, it just, it just, it felt the same every single time, mm -hmm. regardless of whether I hit it on the heel or the toe, or, mm -hmm. it just, just felt dead off the face. But yeah. clearly the numbers show me otherwise, yeah. but it just, it just didn't feel what I'm used to. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Well, let's go to the uh, TSI-3 here. Okay. So that one felt like it was a little kind of healy, but it's kind of interesting how the ball started a little left and came mm -hmm. back to my line. Yeah. So that's kind of showing that forgiveness on that driver. For sure. You have to wonder how that would perform with the other one. <laughs> I think it would have been like that shot that I missed to the right. Yeah. Interesting that this one is very much in the fairway. Oh yeah, that one's good. You know, it, it's, it's funny because it seemed like the, the 975D was spinning really low. This one's still lower. That's interesting. You know, it yeah. seems like this ball's just staying in the air a little bit longer yeah. still, but... Hmm. Yeah, that's tattooed. Well, Thomas, before we even look at these numbers, I want to get your feedback on hitting the TSI-3, which was down to 7.25, correct? Uh, hitting that compared to the five and a half degree, you know, feel, um, how they looked, and then what you think you might get from the numbers before we dive into them. First off, TSI-3 felt like a feather compared to the, okay. the 975. Right off the bat, it just, this felt so much lighter. And I know I talked about swing weight, but it just, in my hands, it just felt like there's just not nothing there. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had to really, and I was really warmed up already before hitting the 975, but I feel like 
I was swinging faster with the TSI-3. That's the first thing I kind of noticed okay. right off the bat. Um, direction and height with the TSI-3, it looked to me like it was flying just a little higher and staying a little bit straighter. Uh, I don't know about distance because the distance, it's just a, such a different feel off the club face with, with them. Yeah. This is so much louder. Um, it, it really is loud. Yeah. And then just knowing that this club head is a lot larger than yeah. the 975, um, just I feel like I got away with better, more, I got away with the missets essentially. Right, yeah. right. Well, I, well, I'll say this first off the bat, your dispersion with the TSI 3 is very, very tight. Um, it's kind of the winner for sure out of the two, which I think we would expect based not only on the modern technology, but also the loft. I mean, if you're hitting more loft on it, dispersion is going to be tighter. Yep. Um, but aside from that, I, so what I noticed was the 975D, it seemed like it was almost diving out of the sky with like a knuckleball effect to it. I think this is what we, the word or the phrase we used. The TSI-3, it seemed like it was kind of floating in the air longer and higher. And you'd think that would result in more spin. It was actually not more spin. So the 97D, or 975D, five and a half degree, spun about 150 RPM more, um, or I guess 100 RPM more. So just under 1900 for the TSI-3 and just over 2000 for the, the nine and a half, or 975D. So the so. 975D was a lower bull flight with a little more spin, even though it looked like it was even though it looked like it was spinning less. Right, yep. right, which is, it was just, it's just, I'm kind of baffled by how that, it just, appearance-wise, it just looked like it was kind of diving like a little sinker pitch. But yep. um, otherwise, other numbers than that, you gained basically 10 yards both carry and total with the TSI-3. Um, so you were both hitting it longer and straighter with the TSI-3, which is kind of what we'd expect as well. Um, your ball speed also was up by about four miles an hour. Um, and then club speed was up by about a mile an hour or mile an hour to a mile and a half an hour. So okay. um, otherwise, I mean, I mean, this is kind of what we expect. Again, I think really the big deal here is just that miss hit, um, or I guess not really miss hit, but the punishing curve on that one with the 975D five and a half, where it kind of went out to the right 35-ish yards um, because you kind of had that face open and exaggerated a little bit. Yeah, and that's it's just shown the level of forgiveness. And it's, you don't have to have such little loft on the driver. Like this is probably even still too little loft from me. Yeah. Even though I'm hitting up on the ball to be able to hit the ball straight. If I'm if I'm on, it's gonna be great. But if I'm not, a little more loft on the mm -hmm. driver is gonna help keep the ball a little bit straighter. It may fly a little higher, it may spin a little more. But you know, we're talking about the distance versus dispersion debate, it's it's important to hit fairways. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely is. And uh, I felt like I was gonna do it with this because I had more loft on it versus five and a half degrees of loft. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Well. Um, I'm very intrigued by this. I think it's not really surprising to see the tire dispersion and more distance from the TSI-3, but it's cool to, to see how you know the, the loft will impact things, but also how the new technology does. And one thing we should note too is, you know, somebody with maybe a lower or I guess more moderate club speed trying to swing five and a half degrees will probably have a little bit more difficult time getting it up into the air and getting distance out of it than someone obviously with your speed would. Yeah, and I, I was probably catching it right in the middle of the club face right. every single time too. And there's not as much surface area to work with mm -hmm. with the 975D yeah. compared to TSI-3 or any driver that's built in 2021. Yeah, so I mean, I'm gonna say, first of all, impressive for you to hit really four drives right down the middle that are 300 plus yards with the 975D, but then also not surprising to see the results of the TSI-3 besting it in both ways. So um, golfers, uh, keep an eye on our Twitter feed for one is you might be able to hit this driver for yourself, the 975D. But also Thomas, thanks for joining and hitting all the shots today. Really interesting and kind of intriguing stuff here. Um, and then of course we invite golfers to come in and get a club fitting at second swing uh, where our experts like Thomas can dive or dive into the track band numbers here, dial you in for your game and help you hit better shots and you'll ultimately get fit like a pro. So Thomas, thanks again. And uh, this is really good stuff. Yep, it was fun. Thank you.